showing content on scroll. It's time to add some animation to our page when a visitor scrolls. In this lesson, we'll learn how to make use of the request animation frame method and detect when elements are within a viewport of the browser. We'll introduce a new will change property and use that to make sure our animations are smooth. And we'll put these together with some transitions to create animations that are triggered on scroll. To get started, open the module 3 sample code zip file and look for folder 01 start. A completed version of this lesson's code is in the folder 01 end. In the index.html file, you'll find a couple of page sections. The first is a header that contains the main photo and heading text. Beneath this, we have a longer article. It's made up of paragraphs and images. I've added the class inline photo to each of these images. We'll use this class to style the images, as well as animate them. Let's see how it looks. We can see the images and the text, but no animation yet. For this lesson, we'll be using some JavaScript. The idea is to check, as the page is scrolled, for any special elements we want to animate. If any of these special elements are visible, we can give them a class and use CSS to animate or transition them into view. To do this, we'll need two things. We'll need the JavaScript to detect and add a class when one of these elements is visible. And we'll need to set up before and after styles on the elements. Let's begin with our JavaScript. At the end of the HTML file, you'll find a reference to the JavaScript file show on scroll.js. This is in the JavaScripts folder. It's blank for now. This is where we'll set up the code to detect scrolling and check for those elements we want to show. We won't be using jQuery for this one. Instead, we're going to use a handy method built into browsers called request animation frame. Back in the day when building something like this, I'd have used the scroll browser event and then checked the state of the page while scrolling. This might work in some ways, but sadly, this has a couple of big problems. The first being efficiency. When scrolling, the console log here will fire like crazy. If we're doing anything like parsing the DOM tree or other heavy tasks, this will add a lot of overhead to the browser. It could very easily slow things down and make our animations janky. A second issue is iOS. Scrolling on some phones only results in this scroll trigger being fired after the scrolling has finished. We'd like this to work on mobile, so that's a big fail there. Thankfully, Request Animation Frame solves these issues. It's a method that we can use to repeatedly check our page to see if elements are visible while making sure we don't overload the browser by checking thousands of times per second. It does this by limiting how often the callback is executed to either the screen's refresh rate or 60 times per second. To set up our request animation frame method, we'll apply it to a variable. This way, we're able to have a fallback function for browsers that don't yet support it. Here we're saying that scroll should be the window.requestAnimationFrame method. Or if this isn't available, use this simple function that waits 1 60th of a second before calling the callback. Next, we'll grab the elements on the page we want to look for. This will look for all elements with class show on scroll and return them as an array we can loop through. Let's set up that looping function. We begin by setting up the function loop. This is the function we want to loop through all the elements and check if they're visible. We do this using the for each method. 
For each of the show on scroll elements found, this loop will check if it's in the viewport. And if so, add the class is visible. Otherwise, it will remove the class. Lastly, we want to keep firing this function, so we'll make use of our request animation frame helper we set up earlier, and pass this function as a callback. This means that as soon as request animation frame allows us, it'll repeat this function and update classes as needed. As it stands, this won't do much yet. We need to kick it off by calling the loop function. Now there's one bit missing. In the loop function, we're calling a method isElementInViewport. Unfortunately, this isn't a browser method. We'll have to write that one ourselves. Here's a handy one I grabbed from Stack Overflow. Just to run through this quickly, it begins by checking to see if jQuery is defined. jQuery changes the way elements are made available, and this corrects for a possible issue that might arise. Next, it uses a handy method called getBindingClientRect. This is the rectangle around the element we want to check. Next, it does a series of checks that will return true if the element is on the page and on the screen. Let's save this and set up our HTML to make use of this new power. While there's a bit going on there in the JavaScript, the result is quite simple. It's going to apply an isVisible class when selected elements show on the screen. Let's choose which elements we want to show. In our index.html file, we start by adding the class showOnScroll to each of the photos. Lastly, we'll also add this class to the header of the page. It'll be nice to have an animation on the titles, and since this is just adding a class, we can totally do that in CSS. In our browser, we can now test this. Opening the inspector, we should see the isVisible class appearing and disappearing as we scroll. Time to use this for some animation. In the scroll.css file in the stylesheets folder, we find some initial styles for the photos. Let's set these up to be animated by making a few changes. We want these to fade in, so we set the opacity to zero. Then we also want these photos to slide into place. So let's adjust the transform to translate them down 4M and give them a few degrees more rotation. Next, we set up the transition we want to happen when these photos become visible. We add a transition to the transform with a duration of four seconds, a quarter second delay, and the exponential ease out timing function. We also fade it in using the opacity property, making it a little quicker than the transform. We're using a delay so that if our visitor is scrolling slowly, the animation won't have finished before the photo is properly visible on the screen. It's a small tweak, but it helps the flow of the page. Lastly, we add a property we haven't used yet, the will change property. This is a way of telling the browser to prepare to animate the element. We supply this property the values transform and opacity. With this done, the photos will be invisible. We need to add some CSS to make them visible. We add a new rule for the isVisible classed elements. In this, we make them visible with an opacity of 1, and we set the transform to just a slight rotation. 
Here's how it looks, showing the images as we scroll down the page. So far so good. Let's make use of the same JavaScript to bring animation to the header. Earlier we added the show on scroll class to the header. We can make use of the is visible class to animate this part too. We'll need to set up a couple of different animations. First, we'll have it fade in. Then the main photo will pop into place and the text will slide up into place beneath it. Since we're doing this by applying a class, we have a situation where there's a change from one state to another. When we change from one state to another, it's a good opportunity to use transitions. But if we wanted to do something more advanced here, we could also use the keyframe and animation approach. For now though, we'll get by with a couple of transitions. Whenever possible, I like to try to use the simplest approach before jumping into more complex solutions. We begin by fading in the header. We create a header style block and set the opacity to zero, as well as add a transition for the opacity. Next, the header is given an opacity of 1 when the is visible class is applied. For the header image and title, we'd like to scale the photo and push the text down a bit. We can add styles to do this. This sets up the initial states of the elements. The photo is scaled down to 0.8 of its normal size. The heading text is pushed down 1m. Elsewhere, I'm using absolute positioning on this title text, setting the left and top to 50% of the header, and this transform corrects by pulling the text back into the center and then adding an extra 1m to push it down a bit. The next step is to add the styles for when the header has the is visible class. We start with is visible, then main photo to specify the photo when its parent has the is visible class. In this state, we can remove the transform. For the heading text, we want to position it in the center of the screen. With these two states defined, the last thing is to add a transition. We specify both the main photo and the heading. For each of these, we apply a transition to the transform property with a long duration of four seconds. A delay as before, and the exponential ease out timing function. We'll also add a will change property here to tell the browser to optimize the transform property on these elements for animating. Let's see it in action. Here we see that on load, the header fades in and the photo and text transition into place. If we scroll the page, we see each of the photos fading in as they enter the viewport. In this lesson, we were introduced to the handy request animation frame method. We wrote a handy JavaScript utility to detect when an element is inside the viewport and apply a class to it. We will be able to use this anytime we want to trigger animations on an element on scroll. We also made use of the will change property, which allows us to hint to the browser which properties are going to be animated. In the next lesson, we'll show how our JavaScript can be reused to show a handy slide-in banner that will appear when people reach the end of the article.